What's up Yakuza, it's your favorite drama queen and today I'm back with a new video where I am going to be transformed into a geisha walking around the streets of Kyoto. That's right. If you are new to this channel, hi, my name is Ila and I go by Crazy Ila. I live in Japan and every Sunday I upload a video about my life in Japan. Whether it's a vlog, whether it's a chat, whether it's an interview with a guest or like in the streets of Japan. So if you like this type of content, you like my face, you like every vibe that you see around this channel, don't forget to subscribe and also follow me on my social media to see my day-to-day -day life but if you're a returning subscriber you know how we roll here you know how things are done on this channel thank you for tuning back in so now let's get started So if you guys have already watched all my solo trip in Kyoto in like the past weeks that I've been posting, you know that I am in Kyoto and I am planning to have the full experience. Actually, I didn't plan to make any like geisha transformation, but I was just texting my friend Rachel who's also doing a solo trip and she was like, oh my God, you probably love Kyoto and you should like go around with kimonos and stuff. And I was like, ah, no, 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 I don't want to go around with kimono much because I I think I've like been there, done that and stuff and I don't exactly feel comfortable walking in kimono especially with the shoes that you're supposed to wear it with like I'm not used to walk all around with it and when she was texting me I was in Gaion like in the geisha streets and then I was like wait a minute kimono, geisha So then I decided I have to experience this geisha transformation. I checked online and to see if there's any website that is available like within those like one or two days so that I can do the experience but I only found two of them and the first one is like you have to reserve within a month or something and for the second one I was so lucky because I could reserve within the two days and I actually extended my stay just to experience that geisha uh, uh, makeup transformation. So the thing is they don't know yet that I'm a person of color. I don't think it's going to be complicated for them per se because I've seen two videos actually that have been done three years ago in Japan of two black ladies who got also the makeover, the geisha makeover and transformation experience. To be honest, they were looking... I'll abstain from all comments. Okay, I'm so excited. You probably wonder why are you doing tourist stuff after five years of living in Japan? I don't know. I have no idea. I guess that's how you keep it spicy. <laughs> anyway, guys, let's get going. I'm literally arriving 25 minutes earlier and that's how you know I'm excited actually because my heart is definitely beating too fast. そう、
I honestly feel so pretty. <laughs> the first time I saw myself, I was like, oh my god, I was about to cry. I don't know. I love it. Hey Yakuza's, so I thought it would be important to tell you a little bit more about geishas and maiko while showing you this process, just in case you're not familiar with the history. I'm reading part of an article written by Eileen Adalit. The link to the full article will be in the description box of this video. It's very insightful, so I highly recommend you read it too. The word geisha means performer or performing artist. A geisha is a high-class professional and traditional female entertainer in Japan, trained in various forms of art. In the west of Japan, such as Kyoto, they use another name which is Geiko. Whereas in Kanto area, the area around Tokyo, they call them Geiki. For Tokyo and other places, they just commonly use the word Geisha. Geishas are usually hired to attend to guests who are predominantly and traditionally male during banquets, meals, parties and other occasions as they demonstrate their skills through various ways such as dancing to a tune played by a shamisen, a Japanese string instrument that I will be probably holding somewhere in the video. They also initiate games, they do art of conversation and more. So for these affairs, they meet up with their guests at an ochaya, which is a tea house, or at a ryote, a traditional Japanese restaurant, and they charge a customer by the hour with flat fees. A maiko, though, which translates to English as a dancing child, is an apprentice geisha. Historically, a maiko started training at a young age of around 3 to 5 years old, but now their training starts at much later day. In Kyoto, they start at 15 or 16, and in Tokyo, they start at 18. Nevertheless, any girl who wants to enter the community does not have to begin as a maiko because it's said that they can already proceed to be a geisha. Still and the same, they are required to do at least a year's worth of training before debuting as a full-fledged geisha. For women who are aged 21 to 33 and above, they are deemed to be too old to become maikos, so they already become a geisha when they get accepted to the community. Again, still with training beforehand. Geisha started to appear in the pleasure quarters of Japan before the turn of the 18th century. But one interesting fact that you must know is that the first geishas were actually men, called Taikomochi or Hokan. The first female geisha, Ona, appeared around 1751 and she was called a geiko, which now remains to be the term for geishas in Kyoto. Eventually, teenage Odoriko, who were expensively trained dancing girls or dancers for hire, started to appear as well. By the end of the 18th century, female geisha outnumbered the males. As time passed farther on, being a geisha was mainly regarded as a female occupation. It became so widespread that a lot of them started to work primarily as entertainers. Anyone who was selling sex, which was against their intended kind of work, were imprisoned in order to protect the oiran, who were licensed high-class courtesans or prostitutes at that time. When the World War II began, geisha started to decline. They had to close their okia geisha houses and the tea houses as well as bars had to close shop as well as a result they went to other places in japan for safety or for work such as factories etc it didn't help either that some prostitutes started to refer to themselves as geisha girls to american military men nonetheless when the war ended the returning of geishas made it at point to reinstate their traditional standard as highly skilled entertainers and at the same time they proposed increased rights for their profession Geisha and Michaels must uh, act with like a lot of elegance and things like that so most probably that's what I'm expected to do in such a tight outfit anyways but I'm enjoying it and the fact that I'm in such a modern world like not around the Geisha district yet but I'm like really odd already <laughs> so it's pretty pretty nice
find it appreciative. Good experience to have. There it's like, ah! people are still like, what is this going on? But yeah, they used to it. So it's very kind of weird to be walking as a Michael slash Geisha, I guess, in the street of Kyoto, like the modern street of Kyoto. It's pretty natural in the Geisha district, I guess. But this is, oh, look at that. I brought some. Okay, now I have another chance to. Well, look at this. Now that's okay. So, oh my god. Something like this. So yeah, it's pretty weird in modern street. It's pretty natural in the district of Beijing. But I still don't know how they manage to wear this every day. Because not only the kimono is pretty heavy and pretty hot. Anyways, they know better. What do I know? It's just a Tuesday in Kyoto, whatever. Alright, guys, that's pretty much it for the video of me going around the Geisha district as a Michael Chan slash Geisha. I hope you enjoyed watching it because I did enjoy walking around like that. Of course, it was kind of hot, even if the weather forecast was like it's gonna rain at 1 pm, but it's like 2 pm right now and it's sunny as hell. But I was trying to be careful with the way I'm acting, the way I'm moving because I think I was expected to act proper because being a Michael or a Geisha is a, it's, it's, it's an art, right? It's, it requires skills and people train for it for a long time and it's uh, it's a very demanding profession and I couldn't like stand straight all the time they were talking to me about my back like I should like have my back straight and stuff and I was like yeah that's pretty annoying like every move has to be like monitored and it has to be like by the book and I'm like I feel kind of restrained in a way but yeah that's the culture I appreciate it and because this was in my to-do list I'm definitely proud of myself <laughs> so proud of myself for having done that I've not seen any harsh discussion about like cultural appropriation or things like that because I'm um, sure may maybe let me know in the comment section if you're a Japanese person how do you feel about me going around the, the Geisha district like that and uh, yeah if you're not a non-Japanese person what do you think because I think in Japan people like more that they are appreciated and their culture is so spread all over the world though you have to not act like a typical tourist like uh, disrespect the culture and go over the place with uh, you know a certain attitude it was a good experience so far i would totally recommend it if you have a lot of time right and a lot of money <laughs> it was quite expensive that's pretty much it for the video guys i hope you enjoyed it if you did give it a thumbs up comment share and also follow me on my social media